this is a still chair. Whilst 99% of the people on planet Earth simply see a piece of furniture, for wrestling enthusiasts, they see something completely different. They see a tool of mayhem, violence, brutality, sparking memories of epic encounters and iconic matches from the yesteryears of professional wrestling. For some, it's names like Edge and Christian that emerge. Their brainchild move, the Concerto Maneuver, involving choreographing a violent symphony with chairs as instruments of destruction. With daring swings, they'd unleash thunderous blows upon their opponent's skulls, igniting the crowd with each resounding impact. For others, the likes of Rob Van Dam, who'd hurl chairs at his adversaries, tempting fate. In a heart-pounding twist, they would catch the hurtling projectile, only to fall prey to Van Dam's cunning plan. A rapid kick propelling the chair back into their faces, leaving them dazed and defeated and others will recall the unbridled violence of Undertaker's forceful chair strike against Shawn Michaels in their 1997 Hell in a Cell match. The loud smash against Shawn's head was followed by an audible wince from the crowd as the chair connected against his skull. The echoes of these battles reverberate through time, establishing the foundations of an era of greatness in pro wrestling. Yet the genesis of these dramatic chair and few spectacles trace back to one pioneer who paved the way. Enter the enigmatic and dangerous Wild Bill Curry. A figure whose appearance alone commanded attention. His chest hairs and piercing eyes were only the beginning of his mystique. His maniacal facial expressions and insane glare could scare a crowd just by looking at them. His wild appearance, coupled with his brawling style, made Wild Bill Curry one of the most disliked heels in mid-century wrestling. In 1955, a match between Curry and Ray McIntyre resulted in more than 140 fans being taken to hospital after a riot broke out. In 1956, Curry was jumped by a fan who was displeased with Curry's brutal treatment of a local star, George Becker. Curry broke the fan's jaw with a single punch. It was Curry's brawling style and controversial displays of violence that would garner him attention and catapult him to stardom. But little did anyone know at the time that it would be Wild Bill Curry's use of the steel chair that would change the landscape of professional wrestling and earn him a place in the history books forever as the first person to use a steel chair. Professional wrestling in the 1940s was an age dominated by technicians and grapplers, but Curry defied traditions often using the chair assault as a way to inject a jolt of excitement and unpredictability into the sports. His audacious battles in Detroit were defined by chair-wielding confrontations both inside and outside the ring. The familiar narrative of using the foreign object to seize the upper hand only to have it reverse played out to perfection. During the 1950s, a significant shift in pro wrestling led Bill Curry to Texas, where his distinct blend of unpredictability, fierce appearance and unwavering intensity instantly thrust him into the limelight in the National Wrestling Alliance promotion. With his brawling prowess becoming a standout feature, Curry's ascent was swift, capturing attention and acclaim. Yet, his hard-hitting approach, while a hit with the crowds, kept him from clinching the coveted main title of the territory, despite his status as a premier attraction. Curry would eventually go on to secure the Texas Brass Knuckle Championships in March 1953. From this pivotal juncture through to 1967, Curry became the living embodiment of a wrestling brawler, triumphantly clutching the Texas Brass Knuckles Championship on a remarkable 20 occasions. His path to victory was paved with showdowns against notable adversaries including Fritz Von Erich, Tony Bourne, Wildo Von Erich, Louis Tillett, Killer Carl Cox and Brute Bernard solidifying his reign as a true force to be reckoned with. 
Curry emerged as a trailblazing pioneer of hardcore wrestling, and his unorthodox approach would spread like wildfire and become a catalyst for the hardcore wrestling movement, which served as a breeding ground for future icons, inspiring the likes of Dory Funk Sr., who would further elevate the chair's significance in wrestling during the 1950s. Dory's Texas death matches would bring the chair shots into the spotlight again and thrust them further into the mainstream wrestling zeitgeist. Fast forward to today. It's hard to imagine a world of professional wrestling without steel chairs. They've become an emblematic feature and also a nod to the sport's storied past. Following the tragic incident involving Chris Benoit and his family, chair shots to the head in many pro wrestling organisations were banned, giving rise to the use of lighter steel chairs. Just like everything else in life, professional wrestling continues to evolve, and as a result the use of steel chairs have become more calculated to ensure less injury risk for the wrestlers involved in taking the impact. Despite the years of frequent chair shots, the steel chair's impact remains undiminished, evoking the same level of excitement and response as it did during its inception in the 1940s, where Wild Bill Curry first wielded a steel chair for the very first time. Thanks everyone for watching this video on Bull Curry. I, uh, I really enjoyed making this video, but was only able to scratch the surface of everything that Bull was able to accomplish during his amazing career. If uh, anyone would like any further information, I'll make sure to leave some links in the description panel below. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel well, I'll be regularly uploading even more of these deep dives alongside other various wrestling content. Thanks again everyone.